I was going to do an intro where I dressed up and tried to do a Batman voice, but I looked ridiculous, although I can do the Batman voice. But I thought I'd actually share something good about this film that's going to humiliate me. This is the only film I have ever watched where the bad guy without a redemption arc gets a funeral that pretty much near enough makes me cry. Name another one. Seriously, name another film where the bad guy without a redemption arc dies and has a brilliant funeral that near enough moves you. Anyway, enough of being nice about the film. Let's carry on and talk about what's wrong with the film. Batman Returns is a 1992 American superhero film directed by Tim Burton. The film tells the story of the Penguin who plots to kill all of Gotham City's firstborn sons. It also tells the story of Catwoman who seeks vengeance against her former boss, Max Shrek. It also tells the story of Max Shrek, a corrupt tycoon who wants to steal the power from Gotham. It also tells the story of Max Shrek teaming up with the Penguin to try and control Gotham's politics. That's a lot of different stories, but what else is actually wrong with this film? Number 10. Bad murder attempt. Right at the very beginning of this film, before the title credits come up, it actually shows the Cobblepots actually trying to kill their baby, who was born deformed. But they didn't do a very good job at it. Now let me explain. They take him to the park and take him to a river, and they're going to just chuck the pram over. But why did they just chuck the top bit of the pram? Why not chuck the wheels over? Because guess what? That would have added weight and it would have sunk. Also, if you wanted to drown your baby, by the way, I'm against all of this. <laughs> by the way, I'm sounding quite of a sicko here. But if you wanted to drown your baby, why cover the whole thing up? Because guess what? You just made it waterproof. As shown as the crib, or whatever you want to call it, is going along, it goes under a waterfall, the baby's fine. You didn't really try that hard to murder your baby, really. Number nine, worst kept secret. When the Red Triangle gang attack Gotham, they send up the bat signal. Bruce Wayne is sat at home on his own. The bat signal's up. So in round Wayne Manor, all these big reflectors with the bat signal all reflect it into his living room. That's actually advertising that you're Batman what nobody has ever noticed it. What if you had someone round? Why is there bat signals everywhere? What, you're Batman? This is a worst way to keep secret by putting up these huge things around your house advertising that you're Batman. Number eight, dropped plot points. Now, Max Shrek is a completely original created character for this film. But some of the things that they were going to do was, first of all, he was going to be Harvey Dent. So the explosion at the end of the film was what's going to scar him. That would have been brilliant, but I don't think it would have tied in with the rest of the film. So what they did was a good thing. But another dropped plot point was the Penguin and Max Shrek were actually going to be brothers, with uh, Oswald being the elder brother and Max being the younger brother. But he changed his name because he didn't exactly like his parents. Well, they're not exactly likeable people in the first place. That one could have been a bit more interesting. These are plot points. First one, yeah, I'm glad they dropped. The second one, it would have been interesting, wouldn't it? Number seven, Catwoman's costume. Now, I'm not going to say anything bad about that costume. In fact, it's probably one of the best. No, I'll change that. It is the best Catwoman costume. And oh my God, Michelle Pfeiffer looks absolutely mwah. As it. I'm hoping my missus never watches this video. But, have you ever wondered how she made that costume? Well, she made it out of a leather coat. Huh? That doesn't make sense. Turning a coat into an all-in-one PVC costume. How big was that coat? Number six, bad publicity. Now, I'm not talking about the publicity for the film. That's coming up later. I'm talking about bad publicity within the film. So when they're actually talking about Oswald becoming mayor, the first thing he does is bites someone's nose off. How the hell did this person get followers when that's the first thing he's done is bite someone's nose off? No one is going to vote for him. Why would you? Well, it is Gotham City and they're all lunatics there. But still, that part of it shouldn't have put it in because 
The rest of him running for mayor and everyone loving him, I don't exactly believe it. Number five, Happy Meal. Yeah, I said in the last entry about bad publicity for the film. Well, so let's do that now. Whose bright idea was it to have a Happy Meal tie-in? Now let's face it, this Happy Meal tie-in was the reason why we never got a third Tim Burton Batman film, because McDonald's didn't like how dark this film was. Did no one watch the first film? The first film was dark. Now I know a lot of people say the second one is darker. I don't think it is, but that's my opinion. But it's still a dark film. The f it's a sequel to a dark film. I mean, why would you do that? That's just a really bad idea. You don't advertise a 15 rated film in a Happy Meal. They're completely wrong market. Who in the right mind thought that was a good idea? And because of that person, whoever that was needs to be shot because we never got, as I said, the third Tim Burton, our Batman film. I mean, it's like making a cartoon series of Robocop and Rambo and putting kids toys out. Oh, oh dear. Number four, toxic byproduct. One of the many plot points in this film is the penguin is going to kidnap all the firstborn children and lure them into a vat of toxic bi-waste. He's also got Max Shrek hanging above this toxic bi-waste, which has penguins swimming in it. Max Shrek goes swimming in it. It's just water. That's not a good plan. That's not toxic. It's fine. Max Shrek was fine. The penguins are fine. <laughs> Anybody explain it? It just doesn't make sense whatsoever. Number three, main plot. Carry on from what I've just said. Actually, that plan is the main plot of this film. It's there all the way in the background. He's re getting the names. He's protective of the names when Catwoman looks at them. It's the main plot. It's the main thing. It's kept in the background, but it is supposedly the main emphasis of this thing. So when it happens, are we gonna get something amazing, spectacular to stop it? No. Actually, we didn't even see the Batman stop it. You just saw them act out their plan, a shadow of the Batman there. That's it. I was kind of disappointed. Anticlimactic? Number two, no real threat. As I said in the intro, there's actually four different stories in this film. Now, although some of them are interesting and it makes for good watching and it's an entertaining film, there's no real threat. I mean, let's go through it. Well, we've already discussed the kidnapping of the children. It took Batman two seconds. Afterwards, the penguin is actually going to destroy Gotham. Alfred stopped that from the Batcave. No threat there. Catwoman just wants to kill her boss. Who doesn't? I hope my boss never watches this. Where's the threat? At least the first one, the Joker's plans actually had a bit of threat to it. He actually did go around killing lots of people. There's no main threat in this film. It's, it's, no. Number one, Max is going to jail. So right at the end of the film, everything's over. Batman walks up to Max Shrek and puts his hand to his face and goes, shut up, you're going to jail. No, he's not. Let's look at some of the facts. He got kidnapped at the beginning of the film. So he can actually now turn around and said he was coerced to help the penguin. And then he was kidnapped again later on to protect his son. Everyone saw it. He's been kidnapped. Why is he going to jail? In fact, he hasn't actually done anything really illegal. Dodgy de business dealings, which he's being stopped by Bruce Wayne in the mayor. Everyone knows about it. Everyone's saying no. But he's not actually doing anything illegal. What's he going to look at? What's he going to jail for? Anybody? Final thoughts. The thing about Batman Returns is, in the public eye, it's not as good as the first Batman film. I am going to be controversial and disagree. I actually prefer Batman Returns over Batman. One of the main reasons is Michael Keaton. He seems to have toned it down. His Bruce Wayne is one of the best Bruce Waynes in any Batman film you'll ever see. He's got the Bruce Wayne part down to a T. His Batman is still good, except for he does a lot of a lot of dodgy faces throughout this film. But I actually kind of enjoy it. No origin stories, brilliant. How many Batman films have we got that have got origin stories? This doesn't. 
The next film in the series was Batman Forever. It retold his origin stories. This is brilliant. The bad guys. Who else could have played the Penguin? Danny DeVito was perfect as the pe uh, Penguin. Michelle Pfeiffer. Even to this day, she is probably the best Catwoman ever. And Matt Christopher Walking, he's just brilliant in any film he does, really. Name, so seriously, challenge. Name a bad Christopher Walking film. Go on, I challenge you. Put your answers in the comments below. Once again, the set design is amazing. It's got Tim Burton's fingerprints all over it, and it works in his style of Batman films. The Batman costume was once again amazing. The costume, every costume was brilliant. The music, spot on, fantastic. I can't actually say that much bad about the film. Yes, I love this film, really do. In fact, if I ever did a Batman worst to best, it would be up in the top three, possibly number two. The Dark Knight will always be number one, but yeah, number three, number two, that's where I would put it at least. So what am I going to rank it? You know what? I'm actually gonna give this an eight out of 10 berries. Now, I know that's gonna be controversial because a lot of people don't exactly like this film, but I do like this film. It was brilliant. I can sit back and watch it brilliantly. There's some dodgy clips of it on YouTube all over the place, and I'm quite happy to sit there watching. The whole story between Celine and Bruce Wayne is one of these best. It's better than The Dark Knight Rises. It is a good film. I will fight anyone that says it's a bad, boring film. Actually, I won't fight anyone because there's a lot more people that say it is. But that's what I think. On to next week. What should I do next week? I should do something about some suspects. Yeah, there's my clue for next week. That's all for this week. If you want to get in touch with me, just search for at Berryman81, and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.